Hey everybody, Paul Collier here with our fifth and final video in our objectives and key results series. And that video is explaining how do we think about implementing objectives and key results throughout our, our organization, including some traps that we want to avoid as we're trying to roll this tool out for the first time. Let me remind you about where we've been so far in the series in case you haven't checked any of these out. You can go back and check out some of these videos later. We start with an introduction. These are the basics. What are objectives and key results? How do we define them? And we went into another video around writing effective OKRs, one around measuring and collecting data for your key results, one around aligning these throughout different levels of your organization. So we're on our final video here, y'all, and I really appreciate you joining me for this training and for this whole experience. So let's get right into it. One of the most important concepts as you think about implementing this is just understanding what is your review timing. We've talked about this a little bit in some of the prior videos. Typically, we have a sequence of review that sort of falls like this. So we're sitting there top level objectives and key results in our organization first. Then we're sitting there lower level objectives and key results. We're tracking progress over a certain period of time. And then we're scoring those on a regular basis and resetting our OKRs for the next cycle. Typically, this starts off as an annual cycle. You can have a quarterly cycle instead. Some organizations will have both. And I've illustrated what these might look like here, just so that you have an example. When you're starting off, try and make this simple before adding in too much review. So let's imagine we get to the end of this cycle. So we're scoring our objectives and key results. What do we do next? We have gone through the process of how you score an OKR. You can check out our first video if you want to get more details on that. You'll have some sense of, did we meet or exceed our own expectations for this? Or are we below our expectations? At that point, it's really helpful to think, okay, can we celebrate and or have a conversation about this? So if you have met or exceeded your OKR expectations, that's awesome. Good for you. And use this as an excuse to really celebrate. Try and make an event out of it. Have people feel their accomplishment. If your OKR ended below expectations, don't avoid it. This is a great opportunity to have a post-mortem conversation. There are all different kinds of frameworks that you can have for this. I use the after action review framework. You can do a simple pluses and deltas exercise over the work that you've done so far, but be sure to try and have some kind of group conversation with folks that have different perspectives. Understand why are we below our expectations for this OKR? And what does this mean for the next time that we try and achieve something similar? So you have the conversation, you have done the scoring, then you get to revise and revisit what should your objectives and key results be for the next cycle. And some of your uh, options here include, you can actually just keep your existing objectives and key results, but extend that timeline out. That's a totally fine option for this, especially if you are working towards things that are really important. You've learned a lot, but you know now that you've got a lot further to go. You can also extend your objectives, but write new key results. So this might be if you have an objective that's so broad, so ambitious that you knew going into it that you're going to need to be working towards it for several years. Your key results might define your success for year one, but you need to now write new key results to define success for year two, success for year three, et cetera. So you can keep the same objectives, but write new key results. And then the final option is to start from scratch, writing new objectives and writing new key results. And as you're going through this revising process, keep in mind that you want to start at the highest level that makes sense. So if it's the team wide level, you start there, then you go to departments, then you go to teams, then you go to sub teams, et cetera. So look different depending on your organization, but you want to be setting those highest level, you know, organization wide objectives and key results first. So that everybody below knows how to align their objectives and key results with those org wide. One of the most important traps when using objectives and key results is the risk that you're not actually prioritizing the objectives that you have written down. As I mentioned several times, OKRs need to be a tool for focusing your time and attention. And so if you're not making progress on your objectives and key results, you're probably not treating them as the highest priority. And it's really common for all the day-to-day -day stuff to pull you away from working on your OKRs. So I've got a few questions here that as a leader or manager, you should be asking if you're realizing that you're not making as much progress in your OKRs as you should. So the first is, you know, did we conceptualize the OKRs 
pr appropriately? Did we actually highlight the most important, the most critical goals for our organization? Or are the things that are listed as our OKRs actually sort of secondary to something else? Because if that's the case, then that other thing will often take precedence. Um, so, so you want to ask yourself, did we really highlight the most critical goals for our organization? Then you also want to ask, well, maybe did something shift in our environment that makes us need to prioritize things differently? Often that sort of thing happens. Uh, you don't know exactly where the year is going to go. So it's okay to reprioritize some of the objectives and maybe deprioritize some of the objectives you start. The third piece, and this is really important. You need to ask, are we allowing our team to say no to less important things in order to say yes to making progress on their OKRs? And how much you do this will depend team to team, but there's going to be a point where priorities conflict. And you need to be empowering your team to say no in some way to less critical things in order to see some OKR progress. And then the final piece is related to this. So there's always going to be some resource conflict in terms of time, money, attention, et cetera. But you think about the resources in general. You know, are we giving our teams the time and the resources that they need to make at least some progress on their OKRs? If you are far in a way vastly under resourced on your objectives and key results, then that is also saying, well, we're not actually prioritizing these things as much as we say we are. These are questions you can ask yourself. Keep in mind, if you're setting objectives and key results, those objectives and key results need to be the most important priorities for your team. So you want to be really thoughtful in defining them, and then you have to manage around them carefully. Another trap is not differentiating between committed OKRs and aspirational OKRs. And there are some important differences. I mean, at a basic definitional level, committed OKRs are things you definitely need to achieve 100% as a team. Aspirational OKRs are those stretch goals, where even if you don't achieve it 100%, making some progress towards it is still going to be really important. So committed OKRs must be defined in a realistic way. You have to sufficiently resource them. They should be things that you kind of know how to do already. And so then you should be able to have a plan to resource them. And you should also be able to define, you know, all the key results that represent successful completion of the thing because you know it. If an uh, OKR is really a committed OKR, but you phrase it as an aspirational OKR, your team might not take it seriously. They might not give it a time and attention that it deserves. Now let's look at an aspirational OKR. So these are objectives that represent those big, hairy, audacious stretch goals. And they should be defined as something ambitious enough to force some sort of leap in performance, not some you know, kind of smaller incremental gain in how you work as a team. If you phrase an aspirational care as committed, a team may be defensive about this because it's going to be really hard to achieve this thing. And more likely than not, you're not going to achieve this. If you say that this is a committed OKR, you're setting teams up for, for failure and for feeling not as sort of proud of the progress that they're making towards this as they should. So keep in mind, there are differences. You want to be clear about what those differences are when you're setting an objective or cures. A third trap is not being focused on your customer or end user with your objectives and cures. So whenever you define an objective and cure result, the thing should be really clear in how it provides some benefits to the end users of whatever your organization creates. And, you know, often it makes sense to define OKRs that benefit your team members too, but you want to make the argument, how does this ultimately provide benefits to our customers or service beneficiaries, whoever is the final sort of person that takes advantage of what we have to offer in terms of our product or our services. So a couple of questions you can ask to test this. If you ask that customer or beneficiary, okay, what do you really, really want? Will your aspirational OKR deliver that thing um, or, or not? Does it really fall short? You could also ask yourself, okay, let's imagine our score for this OKR. Like if we say this is 10 out of 10, like we've really knocked this OKR in. Could this OKR score 10 out of 10 without providing any tangible benefit to your customers or beneficiaries? If not, you want to rephrase it in a way where the objective and cure result is more linked to the, what your customer or what your beneficiaries need. So you want to make sure there's some link to uh, the goals that your organization defines and value in the eyes of your customer or your beneficiary, the end users of whatever your organization makes. 
So the last thing I'll leave you with, when you're thinking about OKRs, you want to implement these in a way that aligns with your organization's values. So, so here's a really simple discussion question. And I would start this exercise by just sharing, okay, here are the values that we have as a team. Then ask, okay, how might we implement OKRs for this team in a way that reinforces what works about our culture and our values? Because every team can implement OKRs in slightly different ways. I provided you a lot of guidance in these videos about how to go about doing this. But the magic is that you get to really create this as a resource that fits your team and is designed in a way that promotes the values that you really care. So you want to think about this question prior to rolling out OKRs as a tool. Okay, I shared quite a bit about OKRs throughout this. If you want to learn more about CoEffect, we work with nonprofits really all over the country to leverage data to make a greater impact. You can learn more about us uh, on this line and via our website, which is www.coeffect.co. That's coeffect.co. Here's more about our team. And the last thing I'll share with you, and I'll include a link in the notes here, we've got a huge OKR example library that has all different kinds of examples for OKRs in different areas, including marketing, finance, HR, business operations, and some other resources that you can take advantage of too. So hopefully this will be helpful and you really getting started on your objectives and key results journey. I think this is a super powerful tool. I use it in my own organization and encourage my clients to use it. So I wanted to share more about this with you. Thanks again for coming with me on this journey. Get in touch if you've got any questions and best of luck.